I will just record uh, today's session. I'm thrilled to, to kick us off uh, along with the, the co-founders of um, the Workforce Nutrition Alliance, my colleagues from uh, GAIN, the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. And I will just um, pop up here on your screen uh, a reminder of why we're all here today and, and um, the, the session that we're going to spend together for the next uh, the next 90 minutes. It's the 2023 uh, Food and Agriculture Benchmark. The latest methodology updates with a spotlight on on a spotlight on workforce nutrition, um, along with obviously Gain and ourselves at the Consumer Goods Forum. We are thrilled uh, to really drive and try to accelerate the importance of workforce nutrition and all of the companies that are uh, putting their their own employees at the heart of their their strategies. Um, and obviously thrilled today to hear um, from the ground uh, what's happening in. Um, in companies, um, we have Ferrero and Olam Food Ingredients here with us today to give you an idea, all of the listeners, on um, some of the, the strategies, learnings and, and uh, tips uh, if you want to drive this uh, in your own organization. So really looking forward to the next uh, hour with you. Of course, please don't hesitate to use uh, uh, the, the Q&A function that you have at either the top or the bottom of your screen. Uh, we are recording today's session. So for your colleagues who didn't join us or are listening to us uh, afterwards, um, we're thrilled to, of course, have you um, have you with us. So don't hesitate to make the best of the the time of the the fabulous experts that we have um, with us on the call. Um, and to get started, um, to set the scene and really uh, uh, help us uh, set the context of why we're all here, I'm, I'm delighted to introduce Victoria um, from the World Benchmarking um, uh, Alliance. Victoria, I will hand the floor directly over to you. And thank you so very much for kicking off today's session. Thank you, Sharon, and a big welcome to everyone. Uh, really nice to see all the participation today and uh, looking forward to, to engaging with you all. Um, I've got some slides prepared um, as we are working, of course, very closely with the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. So I'm uh, Victoria de Bourbon Parma. I'm leading the food and agriculture work at the World Benchmarking Alliance. And um, several of the companies and uh, participants here today, I'm sure, have um, we've worked with, with each other before on the 2021 benchmark assessment. Uh, and uh, hopefully, most of you are aware that we are in the second benchmark assessment this year. So hoping to give a bit more information about to you about that, um, especially when it will relates to workforce nutrition. So as you know, also in this space, uh, access to nutrition is a really important uh, player. Uh, access to nutrition will be publishing its global index next year in 2024. And this year, um, the World Benchmarking Alliance, uh, the organization I represent, as you see on the left hand side, we are currently uh, reviewing and analyzing 350 of the most influential uh, food and agriculture companies as, uh, as said, this research has been conducted in 2021 as well. So it will be a second iteration. Really excited to see where the uh, where the improvements are happening, where the lagging is, and really zooming in on this important pillar of workforce nutrition. We look at um, food systems holistically. So we also have an environmental measurement area, social inclusion measurement area, uh, and nutrition measurement area, which all represent 30% of the total score. Uh, and the final 10% comes from governance and strategy. And actually, uh, workforce nutrition is one of our six key topics that we are looking at in, in, in the full nutrition pillar. So it's a really important contributor to the overall nutrition assessment that we do of companies. We've uh, published the, um, the methodology upon which we are doing that assessment at the end of last year. Uh, it contains a few updates, but is mostly very much in line with what you have expected of us in 2021. Uh, as I mentioned, we're currently full in our data collection phase. I'm also very grateful that uh, I'm joined here by colleagues. Uh, you'll see on the on 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 your participation screen, uh, Sarah Posa, um, our um, senior research analyst, and also oh, Ryan Kazam, our engagement manager, uh, who are both here as well to answer any of your questions. Um, we will be reaching out to companies in the period of April to July uh, with a draft assessment, so uh, you will be seeing what we have found and what the analysis brings forward, and then working towards a publication in October. 
So on workforce nutrition, uh, there's several ways, uh, and that's why I think it's really great that we're uh, in this session here today. And thanks a lot to, to Sharon, but also to Bearbo from the Workforce Nutrition Alliance for bringing us here together, uh, because this is really together, we can create so much more impact uh, than, than all of us on our own. So uh, us from a World Benchmarking Alliance perspective, we can uh, bring a certain type of analysis, uh, but the, but to really forward you on this journey to integrating workforce nutrition in your companies. The companies speaking to you uh, today will give great guidance, but also the Alliance on a broader front. There's many different ways to interact and to get a better get acquainted with, uh, with full integration in your company and also in your supply chains of this important topic. So zooming in on the assessment that we are making um, at, uh, at WBA, at Work Benchmarking Alliance. So uh, C number five is the technical term uh, on the, the indicator that looks at workforce nutrition. Um, and in, on your screen now, you see the full list of, of elements that we will be looking at. So each and there's six elements on your screen and each uh, and every of those elements represents a, a, an amount of points that can be realized for the total amount of score on the ranking of the food and agriculture benchmark. So working towards this bigger ranking and workforce nutrition being a really important part of that. Um, I'll just quickly run through them so you have a so you have an idea. We are looking at company-wide policies. So really um, smaller initiatives are, are unfortunately not being considered. It really has to be a company-wide program or policy on workforce nutrition. Another thing that we will look at uh, whether one of the following two programs is being uh, taken into consideration. So nutritional uh, focused health checks for employees or nutritional education. Uh, if if one, of, one of those is being implemented, uh, it, will, it will result in, into uh, the realization of, 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 of points also on the, on the benchmark. A third element is whether um, there are breast milk, breastfeeding support in the workplace. Uh, uh, whether companies have these, these programs, again, company-wide programs on this important topic of uh, facilitating young mothers with breastfeeding support. Then uh, the fourth element is around healthy food at work. Also one of the key nutrition, uh, workforce nutrition programs that is being suggested by the Alliance. Uh, the fifth element is whether workforce nutrition programs are being uh, also implemented in the supply chains. We, um, we had uh, also um, webinars in the past focusing on this impor important piece as well. How can companies realize that? So lots of support in this group uh, with you here today. So please ask all of your questions that you have. And the final element is uh, whether a company is disclosing quantitative evidence on healthy food offerings in its own operations or and or its supply chains. So really um, the piece of transparency on the journey that companies are at to, to embedding this uh, in, their, um, in their operations uh, and, and further on in their supply chains potentially as well. The, 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 the companies that have been part of the 2021 assessments, just a refresher, there are some changes to uh, the scoring element. So um, um, the workforce nutrition uh, really guidelines and pillars are, are remaining the same, uh, but we've, we've, we've changed a bit the structure of the scoring. So on, on the elements on the left hand, on the right hand side, if one of those is met, you will receive points uh, on that. Uh, in 2021, there were cumulative elements. So it went from one step to the other um, and, um, and it, it, they weren't separated out. So we were really looking as a very first step also whether companies had at least two of uh, the workforce nutrition pillars already in their company-wide practice. Now we are spreading that out uh, also to, to give you better findings uh, and to be able to speak to um, uh, the journey that companies are on and, and where we see potential of improvement. So please share um, any, any questions you might have on that uh, with us. On the bottom of the screen here, you see how it used to be. So the cumulative aspect, it was really an and uh, you had to uh, have one, uh, one of the of the four program pillars, and then you you were building on top of that. Now we've spread it out into those six elements that I've that I've run through in the earlier slide. 
So this uh, also hopefully integrates it even, even more clearly and, as I said, will result into clearer findings at the end of the day. Uh, what you see on your screen, most, some of you are probably familiar with this, this is a, uh, the Workforce Nutrition Self-Assessment Scorecard. So again, another really great tool from the Workforce Nutrition Alliance available for companies to make a self-assessment where your company stands on this important topic uh, to reach many, many millions of companies. We've looked at you know, the 350 companies that we are assessing in this benchmark uh, already directly employ over 23 million people. Uh, and of course, many more through their supply chains are indirectly affected by this. So 23 million is a huge potential of increasing the nutritional intake um, and also just the nutritional health uh, of, of, of even the families, if you look at, at breast milking support. Um, so a, a really impactful indicator, and that's why it's also part of, of our analysis. Um, um, these are more the, the key elements also for creating workforce nutrition programs uh, that also the team here can, can run uh, with you uh, more in detail, you know, support you can have into, as I said, self-assessments, workshops, uh, and other ways uh, in which you can really uh, translate it into your own uh, KPIs as a company. So other um, other other, other uh, examples of, of of things available to you webinars masterclasses, uh, but I'm sure the team here can share uh, much more detail on those. And I'll stop sharing my screen so um, we can uh, share it up to you. We can do a small Q and A here, but maybe you'd want to go to the other speakers first. Uh, whatever is most logical. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you um, so much, uh, Victoria. And um, actually, Barbara is going to. Um, to to keep us moving on, on to the rest of the session, unless you want to take questions now, uh, Barbara, there are um, two, uh, two that have come in, one that has come in through the chat, actually. Yes, um, so the slides will be shared after the webinar, so that is clear. And Victoria, you have a question, uh, a specific question. Would you like to raise it? Yeah, I think the, the um, oh, Victoria. sorry, the other Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> Can they come in to pose the question or should I read, uh, read out the Q&A? No. Yeah. So uh, there's a question about the alignment between WBA and, and, and Access to Nutrition Initiative on coordinating the nutrition assessment. Then uh, question two, what WBA covers that ATNI doesn't? And what ATNI covers which WBA doesn't? Um, no, definitely, Victoria, thanks for that question. Um, yes, we are uh, very closely in touch with the Access to Nutrition Initiative. Uh, they were also the basis of, uh, of our nutrition measurement area. So looking at availability, affordability, and marketing and labeling of, of nutritional products, how they are doing that assessment. Our assessment is much more high level. What you've seen on the screen also with the six different elements, those are the six elements that we will look at from workforce nutritional front, uh, and we won't go into further detail on that. Um, and this year, there uh, isn't a global index, as I said. So I, I believe um, we're the uh, Access to Nutrition Initiative is doing a spotlight analysis uh, on India, and they're also doing a breast milk substitute uh, index. Uh, but next year, there will be the global index. So in the meantime, this will be a really important um, um, measurement time uh, and publication in October coming out on the state of workforce nutrition. In this case, when it comes to 350 companies that we are assessing. Uh, Atni looks at a much smaller uh, group of more the consumer facing uh, brands, um, which are between 20 uh, leading companies in the world. Verbal, would you want to add to that? Yes, thank you, Victoria. And Victoria Quinn, just one one more comment from our side. So we will uh, we will come up with a uh, um, with a comparison of the different um, um, requirements, the the um, the former requirements, the present requirements, and also we are coming up with the ESG guidance for workforce nutrition for companies. So this will be um, this you will see this uh, co coming up uh, in the next months. Are there other questions? It looks like that is everything is clear and um, Victoria, thank you so much for your presentation and for being an advocate and being really, um, yeah, you are convinced about it. You are convinced about the healthy food at work and, um, and uh, workforce nutrition. Thank you so much for your, um, 
for your advocacy and for your uh, leadership and for being here. And you have to leave um, early um, because of, for other commitments. I'm grateful that you came for, uh, to us and uh, I wish you a good afternoon. And now I would like to, and now I would like to give the floor to um, Isab, um, Isabetta Cataneo. She is the well-being manager of, um, of the Ferrero Group. We are very pleased, Elisabetta, to that you are with us. And um, I give you the floor to share your experience in starting a workforce nutrition program in, um, in Ferrero. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, let me just uh, share the screen. Should be, can you see it? Okay, so can you hear me? Hello? Yes, perfect. Yeah, yes. Oh, perfect. You... <laughs> perfect, thank you. So yes, thank you for inviting me. I'm very glad to be here today to share what is uh, the Ferrero journey um, towards a more conscious management of the nutrition in the workplace. Um, first of all, a couple of words about Ferrero, um, uh, which was established in 1946, and basically is the story of a family success in uh, its third generation. Today, uh, it, is, uh, it has consolidated the third place uh, uh, in, in what is the chocolate confectionery industry. Uh, we are present in more than 50 countries uh, in, in terms of premises, uh, and we sell uh, uh, in more than 170 countries. Among the, um, I, I'm very proud that among the main initiatives and focuses uh, uh, current uh, in, in Ferrero, at Ferrero are the diversity inclusion, the well-being, <clears throat> and the manager excellence. And when it comes to the, the well-being, uh, we are uh, in, in a journey in the sense uh, that, of course, well-being uh, initiatives were already present in, uh, in several countries. But at certain point, it was a uh, uh, period 1920, we decided that, that it was really a time, the times were mature enough to say, okay, we need to frame uh, the well-being, which is a very wide um, uh, title, let's say. And uh, uh, it has been integrated as a key initiative in the H HR strategy. So uh, we have decided to set a framework which embraces four main aspects, the health, physical health, the energy, the mental energy, the protection of the person, and the social well-being. Uh, second step has been to set up a governance, uh, of course, around the world. Uh, we we um, design a new logo for uh, the well-being, and we launch the employee system program at global level. In September 21, we decided that it was really worth it to have a specific role dedicated um, to coordinate globally the well-being strategy, and they assigned it to me. And then uh, in February 2022, we luckily joined the Consumer Group Forum, uh, and more specifically in the Empty Health and Well-being Project together with Sharon. Um, and then in July, we uh, uh, got approved a, a roadmap, a well-being roadmap, and today we are in the phase of uh, the implementation. Now, uh, the reason for us to invest in the workforce nutrition. Um, well, first of all, uh, as a family-owned company, uh, let's say values uh, such as respect and integrity have been built into our culture for generation. And these uh, uh, values are really reflected in a purpose that is uh, we care for the better, which is driving actually our uh, actions uh, uh, and intention to impact people and the planet for the better. After uh, a part of this, which is the baseline, of course, uh, uh, in our health pillar, so in our framework, uh, one of the quadrant is really dedicated to nutrition. And when we started uh, to, to, to design our roadmap, what I've done is um, to assess all the regions and ask them, uh, looking at the framework, what, what, do you, what are the areas where you need some help from the group? 
And one of these areas was really the nutrition. So they, the, the regions around uh, the world were asking for guidelines. Then, of course, we also uh, really, we are really convinced that uh, uh, being aware is the first step for a good change. So when we entered the Consumer Good Forum and we discovered the existence of the Workforce Nutrition Alliance uh, and the existence of this uh, assessment tool, that was uh, a perfect match. Um, uh, for us, uh, because uh, it is really the tool that we needed to make uh, awareness uh, uh, live. Uh, another point is that we acknowledge that we had uh, several um, standing alone initiatives around the world, but um, a little bit uh, um, yeah, alone, and, and we really wanted to have a more realistic and uh, reasoned plan to, to, to know where to go. Of course, other reasons for us to invest in the workforce nutrition is that we really hope that people can um, get the best of it, out of it, in terms of feeling more productive and have a better uh, moral and engagement. We hope to consolidate the relationship with our workforce uh, and so reducing presenteeism, absenteeism, maybe contributing in reducing the turnover and, and why not attracting more people. And then finally, we, we do consider also the external impact uh, in terms of meeting ESG targets uh, and contributing in uh, the uh, WBA and ATNI uh, index. Now, uh, how we did approach this uh, journey? Well, basically, first step has been to put in the roadmap uh, the, the nutrition as one of the keystone of our, uh, of, of our strategy. Second, we, the, we approach it not top down, but bottom up, in the sense that we uh, decided to uh, explain the project to all the regions through our governance model and ask them who wanted to pilot this project. Uh, and luckily we had uh, several um, good feedback. Uh, and so now we have Ecuador, Colombia, Argentina, Germany, India, and one work site uh, in US. Um, in December, 2022, we have kicked off the, um, the project. And now we are uh, uh, in the assessment phase, uh, almost at the end, I would say. Uh, what we are asking to the country after the assessment, of course, we are doing the debriefing of the results, uh, um, but we ask them to uh, decide locally according to uh, the, the local situation and reality um, to have a plan, to design a plan, a strategic plan for the next years and put in budget, of course, uh, um, whatever is necessary. The next step that we, ask, that we ask them is to share this plan with the rest of the countries as a practice sharing, best practice sharing. And this will help us to kick off the second wave in the next year, because the, the, the idea is to assess the entire federal group, so all the countries, in the next two, three years maximum. Um, some recommendations, so what, what we have done and then we think that is really useful uh, is, of course, so you need to identify a project leader um, locally at the country level, and I would say even uh, um, can be at country level or even at the worksite level, um, and you need the engagement of uh, the, the HR and the, um, the top management. But then in terms of really working team, it's quite important. It has been quite important for us to have uh, on board the workplace management when available and the sustainability department, uh, a nutritionist eventually or a doctor, depending on what is uh, in place uh, in the country. Uh, the team of internal communication, because at a certain point where we need also to communicate to our employees what is going on or what are the changes. And of course, in the phase of planning, uh, whenever uh, applicable, uh, um, we don't want to forget the work council and the employee's voice. In terms of group level alignment, uh, which is also quite important uh, to give importance to what uh, um, the countries are doing and to make sure that uh, there is uh, an alignment and a fil rouge among all the countries, we have uh, um, on board our group workplace management 
and also our nutrition department. And of course, so the, the, myself with the, the health and safety team. Now, what kind of challenges we do face or we uh, expect to face more precisely? So first of all, uh, we have the, the, the ambitious plan to set a minimum standards. This means that once we will complete the assessment of all the countries, uh, we will understand uh, where we stand. Uh, of course, some of them will, uh, will have already improved a little bit, but generally speaking, we will be able to understand where to set our standards. And this, the challenge is to put together little, little countries with six employees, uh, up to 7,000 people. Another challenge are the budgets, because uh, especially in this period, uh, and considering the, the worldwide context, we are asking all the countries to make savings on one side, but also we have ambitious plan um, that requires investments. So it is a delicate balance in each and every strategic plan and budget process. Other challenge is, as it is uh, um, a long-term journey, because it's not uh, just one-off project, uh, uh, we need to have always the right person on board and engaged. And we know that the longer the years, uh, people can change role or there might be some turnover. So it is important to have a constant contact uh, and make sure that every be, everybody is aligned and engaged. And finally, there is uh, the fact that, uh, thanks God, it, uh, it exists, this assessment tool and the help from uh, the workforce nutrition, but it is outsourced and Ferrero is not very used to adapt to uh, um, uh, uh, systems that are not uh, tailor-made for us. So this is a challenge for us uh, um, in, in some, um, some, somehow. And also, of course, uh, any kind of uh, fine-tuning or problems uh, has to go through several steps before inside of the company and then outside the company through the, the, um, the colleagues of the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. Uh, and this is, uh, in any case, something that we need to take into consideration. Overall, uh, all the countries are very, very happy um, up until now. Um, they did the, the assessment or they're doing the assessment, which is quite tough, but very, very interesting. And they raised uh, uh, their awareness on, on, on their own situation. But we are, uh, as you can see, at the very beginning of our uh, journey. And I think that in any case, in a couple of months, we have done already a lot in terms of understanding and commitment and engagement. Uh, but it, it's a long way, so let's see what happens. And we hope to have uh, really good results out of uh, this effort. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Isabetta, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very pleased and uh, for, 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 for uh, a presentation. presentation. Because Can you hear me? Because, the beginning. The beginning. because you are at the beginning of the journey. It's always for companies that want to start the journey, it's, uh, it's important to see where you are at and what your challenges are. And thanks for elaborating on the challenges you are facing and, and how you overcame them. So um, it's, it's a big um, contribution, I think, for a lot of companies. Um, I'm looking in the chat and um, there's no uh, question uh, right now, but maybe they come up when, um, when Clara um, uh, brings, uh, tells her example from, um, from Ofi, that you have afterwards, that you have a Q&A uh, for, um, for Ofi and for Ferreo. Thank you very much, uh, um, Elisabetta. And now I hand over to uh, Clara Tesla. Clara Tesla is, uh, is the health and uh, nutrition manager at OLAM, uh, at OFI um, for the uh, sustainable, central sustainability team. And uh, you are um, very advanced and you have a lot of experiences in workforce nutrition in your, um, in your company. And we look very much forward to your examples. Clara, over to you. Thank you so much, Barbara. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Could you uh, enlarge the uh, slice? Yes. 
and I apologize in advance. I started losing my voice a bit today, but I hope that everyone can, can still hear me and understand me well. Um, so, uh, yes, as, as Pablo said, my name is Clara Tesler. I'll just take a few minutes to go through um, to share a little bit about OFI's experience, tell you a bit about the company, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions afterwards. So, I'll start off just by sharing a bit about Alam Food Ingredients or OFI. So for those of you who don't know us, we are a, a global food and agribusiness with about 22,000 primary employees and another about 22,000 um, secondary employees um, operating across about 40, 46 countries globally. We have over um, 4,000, I'm sorry, 480,000 smallholder farmers who are in our direct supply chain. So they're enrolled in our uh, sustainability programs and then um, source from over 2.5 million farmers globally across five product platforms. So coffee, cocoa, dairy, nuts, and, um, and spices. So why, uh, as OFI, we are investing in workforce nutrition over starters. Um, in workforce nutrition programs are key to fulfilling our purpose, which is to be the change for a good food and a healthy future. And as I said, we are a business that relies on about 40,000 primary and secondary employees and hundreds of thousands of farmers all over the world. And realistically, achieving our objectives really does depend on these people being well-nourished and in good health. In addition to that, our own experience and studies really have shown that investing in workforce nutrition has cascading benefits for employees and employers. Um, workforce nutrition programs have been shown to improve employee health and wellness, which leads to reduce absenteeism because we are less sick, reduce sick days. We also see increased productivity and efficiency on a day-to-day -day basis because employees who are healthier tend to be more efficient. And we've also seen that working to improve conditions for employees in the workplace has <clears throat> strengthened our relationships employee-employee relationship and really boosted morale, which has also led to increases, um, improved employee retention, etc. So I'll dive into a few examples in just a few minutes, but one really nice example that just kind of demonstrates the type of impact that we've been seeing um, that we've observed is an employee that you see here on the right um, who benefited from a workplace lactation program at, our, at one of our factories in Vietnam. Um, this employee noted that the lactation program helped her, um, helps employees to take care of their children and also themselves better so that they can do their jobs better. And they found that the lactation program not only improved conditions for them, but also think that it will benefit the, uh, the, the, uh, the business in the long run. This is just one of many examples, but it's just a very, very nice, um, nice uh, response that she shared with them. So to dive into a few cities and tools. Uh, I began rolling out the scorecard and developing action plans and programs about two years ago now. And since then, we've reached over 100 work sites so far. We're all at different stages of their journey, but, but we've had some really, really fantastic um, successes. So to cite a few of our examples, um, in, the, in Nigeria, our cashew team conducts annual improved health checks for all of their employees, screening on very specific uh, nutrition indicators. And, uh, and they provide follow-up consultations based on these results. And in Egypt, our spices team is doing uh, rolls out an extensive nutrition education program, um, followed, which was following a baseline assessment to really understand employee-specific uh, knowledge about nutrition. In coffee, um, sorry, in, in the DRC, our coffee team um, conducted an assessment of the overall diets of female employees, with results showing that only one in three of their um, female employees were consuming adequate, adequate diets. We use the minimum diversity, um, the dietary diversity for women indicator to assess that. But um, afterwards, the team began adapting canteen meals to address identified nutritional deficiencies. They did a similar um, intervention with the um, infants of these women who um, were enrolled in the crush in the, the daycare. And then finally, we have our Certainly not, not last, last but not least, we have uh, the Brazil coffee team who, uh, who's, who's actively working with their food supplier to improve the quality of canteen meals um, and quality snacks that are being served to their employees. They reach 100% of, of their workforce. And uh, in parallel to this initiative, they've been conducting employee satisfaction surveys 
And it's interesting to note that the satisfaction of employees has steadily increased since they began the initiative. And the team attributes this to, um, to, uh, to the parallel nutrition education that's being conducted um, beside the changes that are being made to the canteen. Sorry, there's a bit of delay on my end. Um, and then in addition to the ones that I just cited, we have some specific teams who are really honing in on the fourth, the fourth workforce nutrition pillar, so breastfeeding support. Uh, and this has been really, really a very exciting part of our journey because we've seen some of the most vocal uh, results have from our um, testimonies that have come from this, from this pillar. So uh, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, our Nyama factory, team constructed a nursery that can accommodate up to 60 children and is equipped with a dedicated breastfeeding space for mothers to come and either breastfeed or express breast milk uh, during the working day. And in Malaysia, the dairy team is doing an ongoing collaboration with uh, various health partners to conduct awareness raising <clears throat> on the benefits of breastfeeding and on general reproductive health for their female employees. Um, they've also equipped their nursery, excuse me, their uh, breastfeeding space with all the necessary materials <clears throat> to express for women to express breast milk during the uh, working day. In, um, and then finally, in Vietnam, which is probably our largest breastfeeding support program, um, this is the one I mentioned earlier when I said the testimony of the employee at our cashew factory. So for this program, the team partnered with organization Alive and Thrive to establish breastfeeding support programs in 11 work sites um, throughout the country. The initiative has reached over 3,500 employees and their families, including excuse me, activities that included training with employees and management and constructing a, construction of breastfeeding spaces in all of their 11 factories, um, amongst many other activities. Oh, and in, in light, I'll add to that in light of this fantastic work that has uh, happened in this pillar, uh, OFI has been nominated to be a lighthouse leader in breastfeeding support by the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. Bit of an idea of where we are in our workforce nutrition journey. Here is a map where you can see all of the OFA countries where teams have completed the assessment and are rolling out activities in dark purple. And then in light purple, the uh, location where we have not yet um, rolled out the scorecard, but where we intend to, um, to do so this year. So as you can see on this map, 32 country product teams across five product platforms. So all of our product platforms <clears throat> have conducted the scorecard self-assessment and are taking action. Um, that means that 143 work sites have been assessed, and of those 126 of them, or 88%, are active. And by our definition, that means that they are taking action to actively improve their workforce, to reach more of their employees, and improve their programs, excuse me, and reach more of their employees with support. And then, <clears throat> This also means that over 17,000 primary and secondary employees, and uh, which is about 39% of our total workforce, uh, are benefiting from the active program, and over 8,000 uh, primary employees, or about 38% of our primary workforce, are also benefiting. We have worked a lot in work in, um, in rolling out these programs, but it definitely hasn't been easy. We've encountered challenges, as I'm sure every business does. Um, but we do feel as though there are strategies that uh, that can facilitate the process of um, of helping your program succeed. So, for one thing, one of the challenges that we've encountered is uh, lack of internal alignment. Not everyone is aware of the target, or not everyone you know, is on the same page. Often this can happen particularly in a very large organization like OFI where we're working, we've got different business units independent from one another working across all of these different countries. And here we found that having the support of upper management is absolutely critical. Um, we have the full support of the human resources leadership team and then cascading this information and sharing this information with, uh, with their individual, their respective teams has been very helpful. And then linked to this, we found that establishing a uh, establishing and communicating on a company-wide target can be very helpful. So at OFI, we're aiming to reach 100% of our primary workforce by 2030. And I will caveat that, caveat that by saying that we, we specified primary workforce because 
our secondary workforce fluctuates quite a bit throughout the course of the year due to the nature of our commodities, but that when we're rolling out our activities, we very much are focusing on our entire workforce. Another challenge that we have uh, encountered, as uh, Isabetta also mentioned, uh, is that individual teams might not feel as though they have the budget to allocate uh, to contribute to uh, to nutrition activities. So this is definitely a, a, a real challenge, I'm sure, for all businesses trying to do this. And we found really that focusing on small, um, effective, small cost-effective activities can be can be very. Uh, this is a good first step. So there are a lot of activities that are either budgetless or, or very with limit, very limited budgets. Uh, nutrition education, and then we found that kind of interactive activities can be very useful and fun and get employees engaged. Like setting up uh, WhatsApp or, or um, certain platforms to share healthy recipes or kind of like share independent individual success stories. It's really gotten employees involved. And then another important thing to do in parallel would be to, um, to, to be measuring the impact and then communicating on it. Because of course, uh, when everyone starts to see the tangible benefits, um, this kind of opens up space for discussion of, uh, of developing larger budgets for certain activities in the coming year. Another, challenge that we've inquired, uh, encountered, excuse me, that individual teams often feel so they may lack the uh, the subject matter expertise, which is fair. I mean, not every team has a nutritionist on their program. Um, and here we found it useful to, to really um, to really point teams to, to the many available resources that do exist. For one thing, there's the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. Um, there's the guidance documents, but also our colleagues there who've been very helpful in uh, OFI's Workforce Nutrition Journey. We've also had a few of our um, businesses participate in the Workforce Nutrition Masterclass, which has been um, quite helpful as well. Um, and, then, and then speaking with other businesses, we've exchanged with other businesses to kind of hear success stories, hear how they've addressed their challenges. Um, so that, that can be quite helpful. And in certain cases, when it's very specific expertise to, uh, to seek external expertise. So as I said, we've partnered with a lot of Thrive who have been very, very helpful in uh, helping us to roll out uh, breastfeeding support and, and other nutrition activities. And then finally, one important challenge, um, another last important challenge is to ensuring um, accountability. So in ownership, so even if a program is developed, how do we know that um, it's going to be rolled out, uh, who's tracking those KPIs, who's following up on the activities. So <clears throat> here we found that it's helpful to, to, to designate a point person, um, as you said, said, to make sure that Activities are being monitored. That there is um, that there is a uh, follow up, and in addition, that the uh, the um, KPIs and updates be integrated into uh, team meetings to make sure the entire team is on board and everyone's aware of what's happening. And finally, just to note that um, I'll wrap up by saying that uh, workforce nutrition programs, the benefits of these programs have really been are already being felt throughout uh, throughout our different work sites. I won't go into all of these, I'll share the PowerPoint afterwards, but basically we've had OFI managers and CEOs and factory managers alike who have all really noted that the, that, um, that the introduction of these programs has uh, have been a big difference maker and um, how employees have, are happy to know that their business really cares about their health and well-being. Very sorry about my voice, but I'll stop there and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Clara, and uh, I'm very, very sorry about your voice, and we wish you all the best for your voice. And um, um, but they, uh, I, saw, I saw three interesting questions in the Q and A, and they could be both for um, for both companies, and um, if they, if it's address uh, if, if they are addressable. So one is um, how do you measure the impact of these programs on productivity and efficiency? That is, um, I think, um, 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 asked for uh, Ofi. That's a very good point. Um, it's it's often not easy to measure. Of course, uh, we do track certain uh, key performance indicators, and we've had certain teams of verb, uh, excuse me, observe uh, increases in employee retention and um, and return to work following uh, following maternity leave, specifically for our breastfeeding support programs. Um, and so it's a bit on a case by case basis. Employee satisfaction surveys are also very useful and very insightful. Um, so that would be that would be my first suggestion. Yeah, and uh, maybe from from the World, uh, um, Workforce Nutrition Alliance, we are um, currently um, um, 
having a business research, business case research on how our programs really uh, deliver uh, actual benefits in for the companies and uh, for the organizations. So the, um, we will publish um, a review, uh, um, literature review um, um, in in this year. So that, which is an updated literature review. And we have um, uh, evidence uh, on, um, we have a publication on, on, um, on evidence of workforce transition uh, programs. Uh, we will share in the chat. Um, and Lisa Better, is there um, any um, idea from your side um, on, um, on uh, are you intending measuring productivity? Well, okay, well, one of the points will be for, for us, is we just started, no, as I said. So uh, we are um, lucky because we just ran an engagement survey globally and locally. So normally we do this every two years. So uh, in two years, so we will see uh, if there is any change uh, on, on this, uh, on, there is not specific a question on on nutrition, but there are uh, several questions on well-being. Um, so this is a point, uh, and then we, uh, our intention is to work on the absenteeism um, rate. So also uh, to see if uh, there is uh, any specific uh, improvement. Uh, in small countries, uh, the, they also run uh, local uh, surveys uh, on strictly focusing on well-being. It is not worldwide, but this is also uh, a way uh, how to measure uh, so how people do appreciate. But of course, uh, we cannot measure the healthier lives of people also because we need to consider that the fact to offer something doesn't mean that people would do things. So uh, we have, uh, uh, for example, here in, uh, in, uh, in the headquarter, the uh, trend of the canteen consumption. And we have seen uh, that there is an increase of uh, consuming uh, vegetables uh, and fish rather than uh, red meat, which is also offered, by the way. But uh, it takes time to see to, uh, this kind of trend. And also, not everywhere we have a canteen, of course. <laughs> so uh, we won't have a canteen everywhere also. So uh, another thing that we want to put in place uh, are some nudges workshop. So uh, in terms of behavioral science, helping uh, to adopt uh, certain behaviors rather than others. So this is also in our plan. So to um, match this kind of uh, uh, nudges workshop uh, on nutrition aspects uh, in combination uh, uh, with what the countries will do. Um, so it is uh, on the plan and we hope to see something, but we need to also underline that really for us at the moment is a matter of, uh, um, and it's not just for saying, uh, of uh, uh, being respectful towards our values. So uh, making sure that people have the choice uh, uh, to access good food. Then if they do that or not, this is a freedom uh, um, choice that we cannot uh, control and, uh, and and direct too much. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you, Elisabetta. And uh, especially uh, also uh, um, pointing out the different uh, sources of, of data and in different forms. And uh, it's a complex it's a complex program and it's important to um, to um, align this with the company measurements. And there's another question on, um, uh, is anybody of you men uh, mentioning uh, or measuring the impact of the, of the workforce nutrition program regarding mental health? Clara? I'm afraid we have not gotten to that stage yet, although I do think it would be extremely valuable, of course. Um, no, more uh, the... No, not specific. I would not say specifically. I won't, I won't venture. We've had some some insights, but but not anything um, that that I, no figures that I would share. Thank you, Clara and Elisabetta. Saying here, I mean, mental health is another hot topic that we are uh, approaching. Uh, it, it is affected by so many variables. If you look at the, the ILO, I mean, the International Labor Organization Mental Health Policy at Work, there are so many elements that affect the mental health people inside the workplace and outside the workplace. 
so in personal life that he, I mean, for sure, uh, once you feel bad, uh, some people goes to words that deserve their way of uh, eating, for example, but uh, it is just one component. And again, it's uh, most of the time a personal choice. So I think here the combination is uh, give the choice on one side and give the support whenever you ha are in trouble, like with this uh, Empress, uh, program, support program, and, and etc. But measuring how people are feeling, no. We are not yet uh, there. I'm not sure if we will get there, <laughs> honestly. Uh, you are in mute, Barbara. Uh, thank you, Elisabetta. Um, from the Workforce Nutrition Alliance, we came up with the evidence brief on, on nutrition and mental health and a blog with a really um, five uh, tips everybody can do and uh, with an impact. So maybe you can have a look at it. Um, and um, and there's, a, there's, of course, a, a question on what is the reasonable budget for, uh, for programs? Could you, uh, could you bring some light on it? And I will start with El Elisabetta first. Well, as said, we are, th this is the challenge, you know, this is a, so a tricky question because it was written <laughs> clearly that it's very difficult. There is not a percentage that has been defined, at, at least at the moment, nor on nutrition uh, and the well-being level. So each and every uh, country has to uh, navigate uh, in this difficult uh, sea in the moment. So um, saying that, uh, what we are trying to do is to uh, leverage on uh, uh, each other experience and assets. So um, it's true that the nutrition is quite local and is uh, uh, very, very cultural linked and languages and typology of work site, a typology of job, but there are also other things like in terms of education. So we are trying to, if Spanish language are doing something, maybe can be shared to other countries, um, as well as in the same country, if we have a work site for, uh, with blue collar and another with white collar, we try to put together not to having a double costs. So um, we are really trying to help and coordinate this best practice sharing uh, in order to, and not only in terms of knowledge, but also to use the assets of other countries. Uh, and this is uh, one way. Uh, and then the other uh, thing that we have said is you don't need uh, to, when you have your assessment done, you don't need to uh, fulfill everything in a rush. I mean, it, it really depends what you have. So for just to making an extreme example, even if your rate in breastfeeding is low and but your population is above, on average, above 50s, okay, you don't do anything on breastfeeding in that moment and you focus more on something else. So choose one thing that you, you understand is the most suitable and reasonable to, for your people and, and work on that and see the results and then building on, on, on this experience so you can work uh, uh, on additional budget. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Elisabetta. Thank you, Elisabetta. And you, are you have to leave uh, um, five minutes earlier. Thank you very much for your contribution. For your contribution. And for your um, presentation. Yes, thank you everybody. Sorry, I really needed to go. Uh, it was really a pleasure and I hope it was helpful for uh, someone else. And looking forward to see um, to meet again uh, and see the how we are going in the next years. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Um, and Clara, the question out to you before we move over to um, uh, to Miriam. Yes, I apologize. I've also been trying to follow the questions in the chat. Would you kindly just repeat the question that was? The most recent question. Uh, the the more, most recent question was the, the budget for uh, for uh, running programs. Right. Um, so it, it's because we work in so many different contexts and because the activities vary quite substantially. I feel that, you know it's it, it's quite it would be challenging to, to estimate an exact budget. Um, 
I would say that a lot of our teams are doing what I had proposed in the presentation, which is really starting small. Um, if they want to support breastfeeding uh, efforts, they, you know, if they have the location, they identify uh, an empty uh, space that is not being used rather than, you know, constructing infrastructure. There are kind of low, low cost solutions. Um, uh, was it for an exact figure? I'm for an exact figure, <laughs> I think that would be challenging. So it's, it's quite, it varies quite drastically. I would say that there are teams that are spending a couple thousand dollars a year. There are teams, teams that are that are going upwards of that. We we run an annual co-funding as, as a central sustainability function. We run an annual an annual campaign called OFI Healthy Living, where teams can submit proposals uh, and and receive co-funding for up to fifty percent of the total budget. And uh, in this context, they've received some funding from the central team to support those initiatives. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's starting small, demonstrating the impact, and then building on that budget the next year. Yeah, thank you, Clara. It's very context specific and uh, how many, in, in many cases, uh, varies. Thank you um, yeah. for the uh, um, elaborate answer. And now, before I um, and now I would like to hand over to Miriam uh, for the offerings of the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. My colleague Miriam Knepkins um, from <clears throat> from Gain, and um, I hand over to you, Miriam. Thank you so much, uh, Barbel, and thanks a lot to uh, Victoria, Elisabetta, and Clara for your wonderful presentations. So I would just like to close today with an overview of what the Alliance can do to support you. If some of, a, some of you might be thinking today, well, this uh, could be an interesting area uh, for us to, um, yeah, to move further on, uh, to start doing something. There are a, uh, a ton of resources that the Alliance is offering uh, to support companies to move for, forward. And uh, I think most of the these uh, things have been mentioned by uh, Clara and Elisabetta uh, briefly already. But first thing is definitely the self-assessment scorecard to get a sense on where you currently stand as a company and get inspiration on where you could improve. Then the second thing is a guidebook series. So these are four very practical guidebooks. Uh, we will share the link in the chat as well for uh, these three resources. So these guidebooks really give you all of the information you would need for each topic, like, for example, on breastfeeding support, what are the policies that you could be looking at? Uh, yeah, how would you adapt them? What, what does a proper breastfeeding room entail? How do you bring engage your employees on this topic? How do you create some awareness around it? So very practical. And then the third thing, we realized that some companies want some more support even beyond that. And that is why we uh, started the Workforce Nutrition Masterclass. And we're actually starting this week with the third cohort, but then there is, will be a next cohort in September. So if this, is, if, if this is of interest to you, you may wanna consider joining the September cohort. So just one uh, brief look at the scorecard again. So this is an example from Olam Agri where they uh, looked at a number of their work sites, uh, how they performed currently on work on the four different topics of workforce nutrition. So each color represents one area, so healthy food at work, nutrition education, nutrition focused health checks and breastfeeding support. And this is a really nice start if you want to do something as a company to start doing the scorecard across your different work sites. You may just want to start with the work sites that are most interested in this uh, theme and just you get a sense of what you're already doing and uh, also what are the areas where you could improve. And then for the master class to zoom a little bit uh, in on that one, um, we always advise uh, companies to do a self-assessment scorecard before they start, but this is really um, for a work site that wants to do something on uh, workforce nutrition. You may have an HR manager responsible for this topic, um, but they may not have a background in nutrition per se, and they it could be a new topic for them. So this is really a way to help them guide through that whole process of setting up your own workforce nutrition program. So we start this whole process but by exploring your situation, understanding the nutrition needs, sort of what is 
uh, what are the barriers for your employees and how could they be supported to eat healthier? And then we go through the whole process of defining, defining your goals, setting a comprehensive strategy, uh, defining activities that are impactful, getting towards an implementation plan and budget. Uh, and then in the end, uh, combining that, of course, with a monitoring plan, how to measure success. And then by these three months, you will be ready to, to start your workforce nutrition program. And you are already uh, starting throughout this whole process. We really help you to set it up. So this is a combination of live online sessions, but also one-on-one -on -one coaching and uh, tools and resources to help you through all of these steps. Um, I'll skip some of the uh, uh, comments from last year's, but uh, we will definitely share the slides for you to read. And just on practicalities, um, this is comes at a cost of 1,495 euros per worksite, which is really to cover our costs so that we can continue offering this. Um, and well, just to summarize after uh, today, I think uh, Victoria actually started with a nice um, stepwise approach into integrating workforce and nutrition uh, in your organization, but just a lean version of that. Um, first of all, you can always reach out for a conversation to me, to one of my colleagues, uh, to the people you've heard today. Uh, I would highly recommend to conduct a self-assessment scorecard and uh, please do reach out if you would like to participate in the September cohort of the masterclass. Thank you so much. And uh, Barbel, would you like to uh, say some closing words then? Yes, we are already, <laughs> yes. I would like to thank um, all of the speakers for their wonderful presentations, for their dedication to bring workforce nutrition into the workforce and with the results. And I'm grateful for, uh, for all of uh, Liz and Liz to be with us and to um, to to and I would like to encourage you to to start the journey and to look uh, it it has so much potential and so much benefits for your employees um, try it out um, get the first experience and seek our support if you need all the best for you and have a good afternoon.